Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for joining me on another narrated walking tour. Today we are going to Pantai Essen in Permatang Dama Laut. It's a beautiful sandy beach on the southeastern part of Penang Island. We start our walk at this village at the end of Lintang Permatang Dama Laut. There will be some hiking involved, but you can simply enjoy this walk from the comfort of your chair. For those of you who want to do this hike in person, the starting point coordinates are shown here. I will also put it in the description box so that you can easily copy it to your GPS, Google Maps or ways to be navigated to the starting point. Just start this video at the starting point and let's walk together. It will be like having your own virtual tour guide explaining the sites. This is a long video of 1 hour and 23 minutes. I have placed timestamps in the description so that you can forward to specific sites. In this video, there is no music in the background. The reason is for you to experience the sights and sounds as if you are here with me in person. On our left is the Pantai Essen ATV Extreme Park. If you enjoy riding all-terrain vehicles, the entrance to that place is here. We are walking along a path that I have known since I was a child and has not changed much. As mentioned in the video on the Sampo Footprint Temple, I spent my growing up years from ages 6 to 30 in this area. We had a house along Jalan Permatang Damalau near to Batumau. So, I am quite familiar with Pantai Essen even though at that time we did not call it by that name. It was simply known as the beach of Pantai at Permatang Damalau. Then later on, someone gave it the name Pantai Indah, which you can see on the signboard at the beginning of this video, but that name didn't quite catch on. It was only when they renamed it to Pantai Essen that people suddenly start to take notice of it. The last time I was here was in 2004, which is 18 years ago. I can say that the place has hardly changed, except that there are more people coming here to picnic nowadays. To give you a better idea of our walk today, let me show you on the map. From the starting point, we hike along the forest path and stop at the first beach. We will pass Pantai Essen, the Bayan Tree and the Tuapekong Temple. We hike up to Rainbow Stone and turn back. We stop at the Bayan Tree Cove and then visit Pantai Essen before returning to the starting point. I can see that on today's walk, we are not alone. There are other people walking towards Pantai Essen, possibly for a picnic. I am leaving them ahead and make a right turn here to show you the first beach. This detour is steeper than the main path but it's still quite okay. We can hear birds chirping. If you're a bird watcher, do tell me what bird is that? Is that the sound of an owl? I am not good at sighting birds. I have a friend who is a famous bird artist. We would go into the forest and he would point out at different types of birds. And I looked and looked and saw nothing. In front of us is the first beach. As far as I know, it does not have a specific name. So I would just call it the first beach at Pantai Essen. As you can see, the beach here is similar to the ones on the north coast of Penang Island in places like Batu Ferengi.
In front of us is Post Batakapong, a sort of government holiday home. I can see pinnacles leaving their drinks cup hanging on the branch over there and just leaving them there. What a shame they did not pick up their trash after themselves. On my walks, as far as possible, I do not intervene in what I see. Unless I come across someone in a life and death situation, then I will stop the video and help him. Otherwise, I will simply narrate what I see. The sea at Pantai Essen in Permatang Damalau is usually quite calm. It is quite shallow here and the seabed is mud flats. The hills in the distance is the Lokumbar. Between here and there is the aircraft landing path towards the Penang International Airport. So, on occasion, we might see planes coming to land. It is presently low tide, so we can see the high watermarks on the boulders. A close-up view of the boulder shows that it is encrusted with barnacles. This tree, often found along the beach, is called Ketapang in Malay. We know it in English as the Indian Almond while its scientific name is Terminalia Katapa. Can you see an island in the horizon? That's Pulau Kendi. For all the places that I mentioned in this walk, you can get more details about them on my website. I will list the sites I mentioned under further reading in the description box of this video. Through my narrated walking tours, I hope you can get a glimpse of Penang that is often off the beaten path. My plan is to cover the whole Penang both the famous places as well the lesser known one and I will add them all into the map which you can view from the description box and also from the link on the top right. In future, you just need to open the map and click on any walking tour and I will be able to take you on a free narrated walk of that route.
I can see that a bunch of pinnacles have arrived. Okay, let's move on. The path on the right connects to the same beach as before. Oh, someone has put up a sign reminding visitors to keep clean. That's good, though it may often be just ignored. On the whole, I see that this main path is quite clean. I would not be surprised if someone staying here removed the trash regularly. There is even a homestay now, so you can book for overnight lodging at Pantai Essen. The smaller sign in Chinese points the way to the Tua Pek Kong Temple which we will be visiting. There is certainly a lot of visitors to Pantai Essen now, and today is not even the weekend. Gone are the days when I could have the whole beach to myself. Well, just now, I had it for a moment before a bunch of pinnacles arrived. I don't mind people coming to Pantai Essen, but please, if you are visiting it, do keep it clean. Bring home your trash. Don't expect someone else to have to clean up after you. There is another group of pinnacles in front of me. When I was a teenager, I used to come here on motorcycle, but as mentioned earlier, I have not been back to Pantai Essen for 18 years already. I was so curious to see how much it might have changed. On the whole, it looks more or less the same as before, but the sign of increased visitors and the trash they leave behind is quite apparent. The path is sloping down, meaning we are nearing Pantai Essen. It's good to see that a rope rail has been added to the site as a safety measure to prevent people from falling down the cliff.
Here's another signage, this time in Malay, reminding visitors not to litter. And most ironically, right in front of it is a heap of trash. I really don't know what to say about this, but I am very disappointed with those who turn nature sites into dump sites. Is it poor upbringing, lack of education, primitive intellect or what? I don't know. And I wonder what's going on over here. Are they going to do some development up there? You know you have arrived at Pantai Essen when you see the growth of coconut trees and Pulau Rimau in the horizon. It looks like these are first-time visitors to Pantai Essen. And there, down below, is the wonderful stretch of Sandy Beach. In front of us is the popular picnic spot at Pantai Essen. I can say that there is now a swing on the beach. There is also a trash can and it looks obvious to me that someone is keeping this beach regularly clean.
There appears to be a fence up orchard on the left. We are continuing to the Tua Pek Kong Temple first and will return to Panta Essen later. I am actually quite astonished to see how many people are here at Panta Essen on a weekday. If I had come on a weekend, oh, I suppose there would be even more. The coconut trees here is something I have remembered from my childhood and I'm glad to see that they are still around. We are now leaving the Pantai Essen beach area and entering the forest towards the Tua Pek Kong Temple. Sounds like the bunch of picnickers are having a good time.
The Tua Pek Kong Temple is undergoing restoration and they are seeking volunteers to carry the sand and stones. I can just imagine, at one point in time, the cement used to create this path was also carried in by hand. Now there's some hiking involved. As a rule, I hate climbing up and down, so I seldom go hiking. If you listen carefully, you can hear my footsteps and my breath. I will stop talking for now until we reach the next site. Morning. 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 There is a stopover shelter up ahead. It was already there when I last visited in 2004. I remember from that shelter, I can catch a view of the beach at Pantai Essen. I will see if it's still visible today. Not too much, but yes, it's still visible somewhat. The date on the cement is more recent than my previous visit, so I suppose this is from a 2013 renovation. Okay, now the path is going downhill. That I prefer, though afterwards I'll have to climb up the same path again. In front of us is a landmark of Pantai Essen. It's a gigantic banyan tree. The banyan or ficus bengalensis is a type of fig tree that is known for its lianas or vines. I remember this tree from my visit in 2004 and to be honest, if you are alone in the jungle as I was back then, it looked kinda spooky. I do not know how old this tree is. I have been to Pantai Essen as early as the 1980s, but I believe I have not walked this deep into the forest until 2004. Back then, you don't find pinnacles coming all the way here. Only the local villagers know about this place. In 2004, Pramatang Damala was still a long distance from the city, which today has engulfed the whole Penang Island.
Let's continue our walk to the Tua Pek Kong Temple. Oh, there's a shrine here for the Datuk Kong or Earth Spirit. I'm not surprised at all in fact. From the look of it, someone has just placed an offering there. It's hard for me to comprehend why anybody would build such a long path into the forest. I can't imagine the amount of effort as well as expense to complete it. On the right is a makeshift toilet in case well, you have to answer the call of nature when you are surrounded by nature. We are finally arriving. To the left of the path is a sort of pavilion, a resting place for devotees who have trekked all the way here to visit the temple. Behind the pavilion is the temple itself. There's even a welcome sign to visitors. So here we are, the Tua Pek Kong Temple of Pantai Essen in Permatang Damalau. It looks like it has been recently repainted. The red coat on its facade looks brand new. Let me show you the inside. The main altar is for venerating the Tua Pek Kong and this is flanked by subsidiary altars for other deities. Everything is painted blinding red. The official name of the temple, as shown on the plaque above its door, is Kong Hok Su. Thank you. 
it is hard for me to understand why this temple is built so deep in the forest. The last time I was here, I was all alone and it feels a bit eerie. This time however, with the temple having been repainted, the place looks sunnier. It helps that there are now people around. From the temple, we can continue hiking into the hills. On this board, it is shown that there is a forest path to a cluster of painted rocks known as Rainbow Stone. You can even hike to some World War II bunkers as well as a lighthouse but I won't be going there. Let's just attempt the hike to the Rainbow Stone. There's no cement path anymore, just a cleared forest way. At least people have painted arrows to point the direction. It is getting steeper and more exhausting. If you wish to fast forward to the rainbow stone, just click the link on the timestamp. I had to stop to catch my breath. There seems no end to this climbing. Did I mention I don't like hiking? I did. That's why you would find many places on my website, but very few hiking trails. Hmm. 
I'm starting to want to give up and turn back. But if I do that, I, I know I will never come back to this place again. So far, the furthest I have been was to the temple. So this forest high is new to me and it looks like it will be my one and only visit to the rainbow stone. My heart is pounding and every step now is a challenge. Good morning. Ah, DJI camera video. <laughs> oh, tapi sharp lor. Okay, bye bye. Ha, sini kau lor. I had to take another rest. It is so exhausting. Through this video, you, you get to see the whole way to the rainbow stone. I don't cut out any parts except when I had to stop to rest.
we are finally getting there. There's a bunch of people at the Rainbow Stone. So this is what we climb all the way to look at. We are back at the Tua Pek Kong Temple. I decided not to record the journey from the Rainbow Stone since it's more or less the same. We haven't visited the beach at Pantai Essen. We simply passed by it earlier, so now let's go back to take a better look at it.
We caught back to the banyan tree again. The group we saw near Pantai Asan has reached the banyan tree and are asking people how long more to the temple. I decided to make a detour here to a cove near the Bayan tree. And here, this doggy, he likes to be my travel companion for a while. Oh, the amount of trash here. This is one of the reasons why I deliberately do not highlight some places on my website because there is simply no resources to clean up after the litter box. But at least the beach itself is free of trash. It looks well swept. I would not be surprised if someone actually swept it clean recently. We can see the Bayan tree from the shore. This is actually a very nice place for a picnic. I don't mind if people come here to picnic, but if you do so, please remember to take your trash home with you. Ah, the doggy is still with me. Pantai Essen proper is on the other side, across from this heap of boulders. Hello, Mr. Doggy. You can hear in the background the sound of a plane coming to land at the airport.
We can see the shade again. But there's nobody around this time. Nobody is around, but their trash is here. What do they expect? Servants to clean up after them? I am aghast. Whoever created that mess should be ashamed of himself. I blame poor civic education and poor upbringing. People who leave garbage around deserve to live in garbage. The doggy seems to enjoy having me around. We have reached the beach area of Pantai Essen once more. This is where the terrain flattens out and you can ride your motorcycle up to here. Mr. Doggy is marking his territory and is now taking me to see the beach. The beach as in the seaside, not the beach as in Mrs. Doggy.
That's the iconic rock of Pantai Essen. You will see it in many many people's photographs. It is low tide right now, and as you can see here, beyond the sandy shore, the seabed itself is muddy. Here's the nicest stretch of beach at Pantai Essen. This is where you get the picture perfect postcard scene of a tropical beach. Can you see a plane coming to land in the distance? The Permatang Damalaut coast is directly under the flight path of incoming planes. In a future video, I will walk along the coast. Stay tuned for that video. If you enjoy discovering places with me, take a moment to like and share this video so that more people can enjoy it too. That would help with the algorithm. Also, subscribe to my channel so that I can keep you notified of my latest videos. Have you been to Pantai Essen before? Do tell me about it. Just write something in the comment section of this video. This is indeed a gorgeous stretch of beach with golden sand. But unfortunately, the sea itself is not sandy and so it is not ideal for swimming. During times of low tide, like now, you can see the muddy bottom. In the past, I would also see mud skippers, but I don't see any today. I will walk the length of the beach now, so that even if you have never come here before, you can say that you have seen it in its entirety.
The coconut growth is the same today in 2022 as it was back in 2004. If you ever thought of staying overnight at Panta Essen, there is now a homestay lodge on the hill overlooking the beach. We are walking towards it now. I believe this stretch of beach is so clean because the homestay operator regularly collects the trash. For that reason, I am very thankful that there is an accommodation provider at Panta Essen. I will now walk to that big boulder which marks the western end of the sandy beach. And up there, perched on the slope, is the homestay lodge. I believe you will get a very nice view of Panta Essen from there. The island in the horizon is Pulau Rimau. This area is rather crowded. I suppose some of them are homestay guests. Let's move along. Here's the homestay at Pantai Essen.
We are passing the ATV site once again, meaning we are almost at the end of our journey. This section is surprisingly unchanged from 2004. When I saw it the first time, it reminded me of the journey to Petra in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. We have finally arrived at the village of Permatang Damala once again. Our visit to Pantai Essen was over one and a half hours, though I cut out a portion between Rainbow Stone and the temple. I look forward to going home now so that I can start working on putting this video on YouTube to share with you. Even if you have no chance to visit Pantai Essen yourself, I hope this video serves as the nearest thing to going there yourself. Thank you for staying with me to the end of the trip. You are just awesome. Do join me on my next walking tour where I will take you to discover another interesting place in Penang. There is a lot of places I have lined up to show you, so do subscribe to my channel and I look forward to meeting you again. Thank you for watching and until we meet again, take care.